Hey folks, today I'm going to give you a tour of the basement storage here on my Jayco Pinnacle. I've actually had a couple viewers request some details over the last few months on the basement storage specifically and how I've got everything set up. And so my goal today is to give you all those details, but also present three game changers, in my opinion, three things that have really helped the way I store things here in my RV. And I think I would want these three things on just about any RV that I own in the future. So definitely stick around to the end of the video to catch those three things. Now I've got to confess, I always feel a little awkward making these types of videos, you know, showing off my setup because who am I to think that people out there really want to see my setup that it's just so special but the truth is when I watch other videos like this on YouTube I always find them extremely helpful because maybe you can pick up an idea or two that someone else has done that's really helpful and it kind of makes your whole RV experience more seamless so that you can spend more time with your family and not have to deal with some of those nuisances so my hope is today that you'll find this video helpful as I give you a tour here of my basement storage and on that note as we get started here today I just want to say that I really appreciate your feedback in the comments below and so as you're watching this today if you see something that's missing from my storage area here or maybe a product that you're currently using on your RV that really would help me out here in the storage space definitely let me know in the comments below would love to hear from you there but like I was saying this is my Jayco Pinnacle this is the 37 MDQS floor plan so it's a mid bunk but it's got the traditional front bedroom layout here and so the the dimensions and the layout that I'm about to show you here all of this is going to apply pretty much to any Pinnacle that has a front bedroom layout here so with that let me just point out the first thing that I really like about this space, and that is how large this opening is across. I think it is one of the largest openings on a door like this. And I actually got my tape measure here. So let me just show you how far it is across. So I'm going from inside of the opening to the other, and you can see it is 53 and a half inches across. Now you'll notice that there's these bump outs lined in carpet on either side. And so the actual true storage opening is a little bit narrower. In fact, if I move my tape measure there, you can see the actual opening is just over 44 inches across. But that's still a very large opening, and I think having the door even larger, even though it has those bump outs, it still just makes everything a lot easier to reach in here and gain access. You don't feel like you're you know, bumping your shoulders into things as you're reaching in there. So I really like the oversized opening here on the pinnacle but let's talk about game changer number one and that has to do with the lighting here in my storage space now you can see from Jayco they give you this nice light up here it is motion activated and so I think that's a great feature kind of a no-brainer for storage space in an RV but for me that light is just a little bit anemic considering how large this storage space is and so what I did here is add a switch down here and it connects to the LED strip that runs the full length here or full width of this storage space and kind of L's around to the other side and then also L's back around here so it kind of gives coverage on all the sides just check out the difference in this space having that extra LED strip you know compared to not having it, it makes a huge difference especially when you're trying to find a tool you know maybe it's dark outside even if it's not dark outside you know it's such a deep large storage space having that bright light really makes a big difference it's something that i'd love to see rv manufacturers incorporate from the factory you know i mean it's great that they give you lights like this but really for something as large as this I like having that nice bright strip light running the full length of the storage space. And let me just mention if you're interested in adding an LED strip light like this one here and a switch to your storage compartment, I will include affiliate links to these specific products in the description below. So I appreciate y'all using those to support the channel. But let me show you next some of the standard features that you're going to find on pretty much all the Pinnacle floor plans in the storage area here. Things that I really like the way they incorporated here. And the first one is this little cord pass through. I mean, you've seen these before, but this is super handy. You'll notice it's right next to an outlet. Jayco actually gives you this outlet. They actually give you two. There's a second one back here along with some coax jacks. 
but I really like the way they incorporated those outlets and then gave you this pass through because think about it, if you're using a maybe an extension cord, sometimes I'll plug one in here and then run it through the pass through to my truck to plug in the engine block heater when it's cold outside. So that's great that you can use that and you don't have to worry about critters, you know, being able to crawl back up into your storage space. You can cut that off and make it real tight. So that's really nice the way they did that. And then just above here, of course, that's the switch to the nice LED strip. You're going to notice I've got my Victron battery monitor right here. This is the BMV 712. Really love this. I've done another video on the install, not here on my Pinnacle, but on some previous rigs. So I'll put a card up for that if you're interested. Now, normally this display would go in your living space, you know, next to your control panel area. I didn't have a lot of real estate here in my Pinnacle for that, the way the BM Pro system is. And plus this is Bluetooth. So most of the time I'm looking at this on my phone and so I don't actually need this display. So I just put it here in the storage somewhere I can get to it easily. Then directly above that you've got the nice central vac. I really like the position of this this vacuum because I mean it's right here super easy to reach in. This is where you're going to be changing your vacuum bags and such and this is of course connected then to the two other inlets that are inside. One's going to be the dustpan and the other is just the standard hose inlet. But then here you've got a third inlet and I really like this a lot because think about it, you can use this to clean out your storage area here. You can see I actually need to vacuum mine out. It's pretty, pretty dirty, but that's really handy. But then the other thing that this is really nice for is imagine that you're at your campsite, your truck is parked out here by your fifth wheel. The hose that they give you can actually plug into here and you can actually reach your truck and vacuum out your truck. So that's really handy. I love having that right there, easy to get to. Jake also gives you this little tire pressure gauge. I don't think I've actually used this as kind of one of the old school style, real simple. Uh, but it is nice that they give you that there kind of as a backup. And then of course up there is your, your light that you can toggle on and off between motion or always on. So those are some of the standard features that you're gonna get on pretty much any Pinnacle. Now let's talk about game changer number two for your storage area, and that is this pull-out Moride storage tray. I'm a big fan of these. I think this is the third one that I've installed on an RV, and I really like these, especially when you have a full pass-through storage, you know, that goes from one side of your RV all the way to the other. It just makes accessing and reaching things, especially that are all the way into the middle, a whole lot more efficient, a lot quicker. You don't have to bend over and strain your back or anything. So I'm a big fan of these. Let me show you a little bit of how this one works, how well it's made. You can see first off it's got a latch there, a handle, and that locks the drawer so that it can't come out in transit. It's very secure. But to open that latch up you just lift up on it and then you can pull and check this out. I've only got two fingers, how effortlessly that is. I mean just look at the size of those rollers on there. They're super large and even with this tray all loaded down with all this gear here and I'll show you that in a minute it's still very easy to pull out but check out just how far that pulls out I mean if I didn't have this storage tray here and I wanted to get to say this bin down here I would have to pull out my toolbox here I'd have to pull out all these bins here and then finally I would get access to this bank of bins. And so having that drawer there just makes accessing everything a whole lot easier. In fact, let me give you the dimension of how far this pulls out. I've got my tape measure right here, and I'm just gonna measure from the outside wall of the fifth wheel there, you can see, to the end of this, and it comes out 44 inches approximately. So I mean, that to me is a game changer. And the nice thing about this is this actually, this drawer actually can slide not just out on this side, but it can also go all the way through to the other side. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. Now, for those interested on the dimensions of this specific storage tray and why I settled on it, let me touch briefly on that. Like I mentioned before, this is a full length storage tray and so it goes out in both directions. But you'll notice here that I've got a gap, that it doesn't cover the full width here of my RV. And that's because this is a wide body. The Pinnacle is a wide body. So it's 102 instead of 96. And the actual length here of the Moride storage trays, the full length trays, it's about 90 inches. And so you can see I've got really about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches all the way to the outside wall here. It actually works out really good here because with that cord pass through, 
through, it doesn't interfere. And so I chose to position the storage tray where I have that excess space here on my campsite, whereas on the opposite side, I'll show you here on the wet bay, it is flush on that side. So again, this is the full length storage tray, 90 inches long, pretty much goes the full width of your RV there. Then as far as the width of the storage tray itself, I settled on the 30 inch model, 30 inches across. And I believe Morite is pretty much referring to the inside dimensions. You can see there, if I get my tape measure lined up on the inside, it's right at about 30 inches across to the usable space there on that drawer. Then the overall space, because you can see that the slides there stick out beyond that. If I hook my tape measure on there, and go across just under 33 inches there. And so that's the overall width, including the slide. Then as far as the drawer itself, because you can see the drawer has these little ears on top. If I hook up my tape here, I'm kind of doing it one hand, it's just a little hard there. If I hook up my tape there on this side and then go across, you're looking at just under 32 inches. And so if you wanna fit this exact same drawer into a different RV, the 30 inch model, you're gonna need at least an opening, an overall opening here at least 32 inches. And that would leave you with probably about a 16th of an inch. So I'd probably recommend adding another inch or two minimum, meaning you probably really want a 34 inch opening at least to clear this 30 inch model. You can see on mine, I've left quite a bit more space on this side. I've got probably about, oh, two, two and a half inches. And then over here, you can see I've got more like 10 inches or so of space between the drawers. You might be wondering, well, why didn't you get a bigger drawer to cover this gap here on your opening because it looks like I certainly could have until you get on the opposite side, the driver's side over here, and you notice that I don't have that same gap over here on the drawer that I had on the campsite. And that's because of the wet bay, essentially. The opening of this door is actually the same on both sides, but the doors are not lined up. They're kind of offset. And so this side, the door is pushed back toward the rear of the rig to give you this space for the wet bay. And so it looks like from this side, I have filled the opening entirely with that drawer. And for me, it's not a problem with the doors being offset. I actually like how they did that because I'll show you here on the other side, it actually gives me a space to slide my zero gravity chair. So you can see here, I've got some little kids chairs, little camping foldable ones, but then having that extra, you know, about let's say 10 inches or so of clearance, it gives me the chance to then put those zero gravity chairs in there. And two of them, these are kind of full size, you know, standard zero gravity chairs kind of fit in this space perfectly. And they're in that folded collapse position right now. And then I've got just a simple strap kind of holding them to the wall. So I actually really like this layout because you can then get those chairs in there and you still have a nice 30 inch wide storage tray. Now, as far as the install goes, it's really simple, really straightforward. I think it's something that just about any RVer could do on your own. In fact, you don't actually have to order this tray from a dealer. You can buy it online. It's available from all sorts of different retailers. In fact, I'll put a, an affiliate link for this specific one here in the description below. But typically it's gonna be shipped through freight because of its large size and weight. But let me point out just a couple important install details. And the first one has to do with clearances. So you can see that the bottom of the storage tray is actually right here. And then it's got this kind of like a riser basically that's raising the drawer up. So you might be thinking, well, why, why do you need all of this right here? And the reason is because of this lip right here. So depending on your RV brand, you know, typically you're going to have a little bit of a lip coming out of your storage tray right here. And so this drawer needs to be able to clear that lip. You know, if you've got a class A motor home and you've got storage compartments, it may not have this lip because maybe your doors open from the side or in a different manner. And so you don't have to worry about that. But with a towable, typically you're gonna have a lip. So just depending on how tall your lip is right here, you're gonna have to raise up the drawer so it can clear. And I'll just kind of show you that again here, kind of coming level from the side. 
what that looks like. So you can see I've got plenty of clearance right there with that riser on there. And I'll give you some dimensions on it too, because depending on your brand, you may not need these risers. There was something extra that I had to purchase. So you can see here, if I put my tape measure right at the base of the drawer, you're gonna need, looks like about two inches, I would say to be safe, two inches of clearance uh, with your lip right here. And you can see in my case, my lip is right at about two and a half inches. So I'm a little bit short there. If I had just a half inch lower here on this lip, then I probably would not need these risers. So this is an accessory from Moride that you can buy that's designed specifically for this purpose. And it's got some different height settings here you can see. So you could go even higher if you needed to clear a bigger lip right here. In fact, right now you can see I've got mine raising it up just about an inch and a half. So you could go up another half inch the way it's set up here. And so that is an important install detail to make note of. On the, I think the last RV I had, I had a similar situation here with the lip. I don't know if I just didn't know about these at the time or didn't want to spend the extra because I will say they are a little bit pricey considering it's just some metal feet that raise it up. But in the last RV, I just got some hardwood and you know put some hardwood underneath, cut into slats, narrow slats that match the width here, and use that wood to raise up the entire drawer slide. You know, you want to use something solid, don't use MDF or something like that that could absorb moisture, you know, something uh, pine or some kind of hardwood. Uh, but that's what I did in the last RV, and this one I said, well, let me try these brackets out and see how they, they work. I mean, I think it definitely looks more, uh, I guess, polished or refined, maybe having these metal brackets as opposed to having strips of wood, you know, raising up the height of the rails there. Uh, but they are expensive, so you just got to decide for yourself what you want to do there. Uh, but I will include a link to those brackets in the description below there. The rest of the install is really straightforward. I mean, it comes fully assembled, so you're not having to put together the drawer or anything like that. It's all put together for you already. The only thing that you do have to assemble is if you need to raise up the rails with those brackets that I was showing you, then you do have to attach those to the rail. And even that's really straightforward. It's just some bolts and nuts that you put together. In fact, you can see there's six of them that they give you if you buy the kit. You've got one, two, and then two in the middle, and then two on the opposite side. But this is what it looks like with the drawer pushed all the way out to the opposite side. So you can kind of see what it's like here. And I mean, mounting it is really simple. You just put it in your storage area, get it where you want to, and then they give you these screws and you're just screwing it down into the subfloor of your storage compartment. So it's really simple. There's basically four attachment points on each one of those brackets. But if you weren't using those brackets, you can see you'd basically be putting screws through these holes that are located on the frame rails of the slide. Check out how beefy these rollers are and the thickness, the gauge of the metal here on the rails. Really solid product. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the capacity on the drawer that the manufacturer more I'd race it at is 800 pounds. So really solid product. But let me show you how it works as far as sliding the drawer from side to side. So right now we're on the driver's side of the RV. We hop over here to the passenger side. It's really as simple as just pushing on the drawer here. And it's got a real nice solid catch. You can probably hear that in the video that locks it into place so it's not going anywhere. And then to extend the drawer on the opposite side, you have to go to the other side. So you can't accidentally push the drawer or extend it on the opposite side, which is really important, especially if you had your door shut over there. So now we'll hop over here to the passenger side and it's the same deal. You've got that blue handle, the latch, you just lift it up and pull it out. And let me show you this. When I get it pulled all the way out there, you can see I've got the same extension that I showed you on the other side. In fact, a little bit further on this side because I've got the tray offset kind of mounted closer to this driver's side on my RV. 
But check this out. This is the same bin over here that I was accessing on my campsite when the drawer was pulled all the way out. So, I mean, you truly have access to the middle of your storage compartment without having to rearrange anything. And that's what I really like about having these storage trays. So that's pretty much all the details on that storage tray. That's game changer number two for me. But let me touch on a couple other features that actually come standard on the Pinnacle and in some other little mods that I've done here on the, the driver's side with the wet bay and everything. So first up, check out this built-in storage area. This is actually done by Jayco. It comes on pretty much all the Pinnacle floor plans, I think, up here in the storage. But notice how they've given you these nice Nice three shelves down here that you can put some things with the little netting to keep everything secure. And so I've got some kind of backup hoses and a heater and some other things tucked in there. So I really like that because that space is kind of tucked out of the way and it's there for you to use. And then up here I've added some little storage hooks. These are just standard hooks that you could buy at your home center. They're really intended more for like a garage in your house. But I love these, how beefy they are. They extend out really far and I've got, you can see just a spray bottle kind of resting on one. Uh, I used to keep a surge protector up here before it fit perfectly. So I really like these a lot. You can get those at your home center again. And then one thing I'll point out here that I really like that Jayco does here on the Pinnacle is giving access compartments. So a lot of RVs that I've had in the storage compartment, this would just be kind of a solid wall going all the way across. And so if you ever needed to have any work done on maybe your water pump or your the backside of your furnace, your water heater, or all the electrical, you'd have to take off the panel. And it's just a lot of you know unscrewing things. So I really like that Jayco, first of all, here in the middle, leaves this giant area kind of open with some sliding panels. Now when I bought it, they were screwed shut in the middle with just a single screw holding them shut. And I think that's how they're doing it, but I just took out that screw and used the same hole to put some leftover little knobs, pulls on. Because for me, I'm always, I feel like opening up this compartment you know, maybe once every other trip or so to do something, something minor perhaps. So for me, I like to be able to quickly get in and out without any tools. And I really don't have problems with these sliding and transit open. I think maybe one time I noticed after a, a long day on the road that the panel had opened up on its side, on its own rather, but uh, really don't have issues with that. But then Jayco also gives you this panel over here for your kind of your wet bay in the back side where your water pumps are and everything. And I really like this. Now, when I bought the unit, this was actually screwed down with four screws in each corner. And I did a separate video on this. I'll put a card up for that. But I just took the existing panel that Jayco put in here and used some drawer slides to turn it into a door that slides. And this is really helpful because then if you've got a problem, you can real quickly get in here to your water pumps and everything else that's back in there and see what's you know going on. So I'm a big fan of having access to things without you having to take screws out and unscrew things. You know, I really wanna be able to get to things quickly. So I like the way that Jayco gave that access and provisioned it, and then I was able to real easily, you know, modify it to make it even faster. But let's hop over here to the, the wet bay side. You've probably seen this before in other pinnacles. I really like the way that there's a divider wall right here that's separating clearly the wet bay from your dry storage because if you you know have an oopsies and something sprays that water is not going to then transfer over to maybe something that should be dry here in your store so i really like that first off i did have to add a gasket you can see kind of right here between the wall and it goes all the way up and then i did a second one here on the actual storage dray or storage door rather so that when this door is shut there is a seal between your wet bay side in your storage so that let's say that uh, maybe one of your hoses started leaking here at the fitting and was spraying water all inside your wet bay well without this gasket here that water could make its way across the door especially if it's spraying and end up here in your dry storage and so that's a real easy thing i'll put a link in the description below to that gasket that i found you know i really wanted to find one big gasket that would be you know fill the whole void here but this was the best that i could find it's kind of like an automotive door gasket that has a pull and stick adhesive there 
but I do like the way the wet bay is isolated over here. Haven't really done much, but uh, what I have done here, I got inspiration from a lot of different Class A's that I've seen uh, that have in their wet bay, you know, place to wash your hands with, with soap, paper towels, and a nice little faucet. And so I just took the existing kind of the water uh, shut off there, the hot and cold that they give you, and they give you a little hose that plugs into there from the factory, and then just bought this little kind of gooseneck faucet that has the same kind of quick connect fitting there that you plug in there and that way you kind of got your own little faucet here with the hot and cold then you can add yourself a little nice soap dispenser off to the side there and then of course a little paper towel roll there at the top so for me this kind of makes the ultimate wet bay setup that I can you know easily on the side of the road maybe at a rest stop if I need to wash my hands I can real quickly come out here and do all that uh, which speaking of which one thing I really like that they do on the pinnacle is they give you a switch for the water pump out here on my last rig I actually had to add this but you can actually toggle the water pump on and off so that if you're on the road you can do it from the outside here in the wet bay or of course from your control panel inside you know a lot of RVs only have that water pump switch on the inside at your control panel so then if you want to use your water and you're on the outside you got to go all the way around the other side open up the door turn the switch on you get the idea so it's really nice having that switch right here as well now before we talk about game changer number three let me touch on one other benefit of having a pullout storage tray and that is if you do need to service something here in your basement storage you know i showed you all the access panels right here you don't have to pull everything out. Notice how I've got the drawer slide pushed all the way to my campsite here, and I've got full access. So if I needed to crawl in here, I just take out my little knee pad, save your knees, and hop in here, and then I can get real quick and easy access within seconds to all of this. I mean, just think about it. If I didn't have this storage tray in here and I need to get access, I would have to pull out all those individual bins one at a time, you know, pull them out, have them laying out here on the ground, and then I would be able to get access to that. Where with that storage tray in there, you just pull it out to whatever side you need and you've got full access. And then another thing I'll just point out for those that have a Jayco and you've got the Jayco filtered drinking water system. If you're wondering about how that interfaces when you have a storage tray, you'll notice that I just left myself some slack here on that quarter inch vinyl tube that feeds it so that whether the tray is pushed all the way to my campsite or all the way to the driver's side, it's still going to reach and not strain on that tank there. So you just have to make sure that you've got enough slack on that line and for the grand finale game changer number three is you guess it the bins here now you might be wondering what is so special about these bins here that i consider them a game changer right well let me tell you why if you go to a big box store you know a home improvement store or walmart target store like that chances are the bins that you're going to find there are going to be bins that nest in other words they have sloped sidewalls they're you know wider at the top and then narrow at the bottom so that they can all nest and stack within each other on the store shelves and that way they can get you know 20 or 30 of them on the shelves in the store as opposed to you know maybe only two or three in that same amount of space they also do it i think for you know transportation reasons efficiency reasons and so most bins today that you buy are going to have those sloped sides these bins however you'll notice they are straight wall side bins they go straight all the way down it kind of reminds me of those old milk cartons and these are of course plastic but they're very durable they're very well made but the reason I consider these a game changer is that they're way more efficient when it comes to what you can store inside of them because of those straight walls I mean if these bins all had that tapered bottom that's less stuff that you can actually put inside the bin plus if the bin doesn't have a lid then you can't stack them and pull off this neat little stacking trick without actually having a lid on the bin themselves so I really like these bins a lot I've gotten a lot of questions actually about these in other videos that I've done people wondering where I got these and I actually found them through a company a b2b company 
company that sells warehouse supplies for you know warehouses and i guess these would be used for storing different uh, components in a warehouse and so they're straight walled so i will include links in the description below they're not affiliate links or anything it's just a direct link to the company and the company's name is uline if you aren't familiar with them they do a lot of warehousing equipment a lot of boxes and things like that for e-commerce businesses but that's where i got these bins and i really like them i bought these I think three RVs ago. So I mean, I've had these for quite a while and they have held up very well. They're very durable. They're not that cheap, flimsy, you know, plastic. They're really thick gauge and uh, they're just really well built. They are a little bit expensive. You'll see that when I link to them in the description, if you pull them up, depending on what size, they are a little bit pricey, but it's the kind of thing where you buy it once and you're not going to have to buy them again. Like I said, I've used these for years in different RVs and the sizes that I've got seem to work out really good. And speaking of which, let me give you the dimensions of these specific bins here for those interested. I've actually got three different sizes. Well, I guess four counting these right here, but three different sizes of these main bins that all kind of stack on top of each other that again are straight walled bins. And basically the length and the width so the width going across here and the length are the same on all three of the sizes that I'm going to show you here. The only difference is the height. And so what's really nice about that is you can choose different heights here and mix and match and they still kind of stack on top of each other so that depending on how much height you have in your storage opening here, you can mix and match and get the bins that, you know, most efficiently fill that, that space there. All right. So let me give you the length of these. And so this one is 23 and 3 fourths. That's the length. And then going across on the width here, it's kind of hard doing this one handed here. All right, so this one's 14 and a half. So 23 and a half by 14 and a half, that is the length and the width. And that's gonna be the same for all these bins. The only thing that's different then is the height. So we'll do this bottom bin first here. This is a taller one. I think it's the tallest one they offer. So you can see from the bottom of the bin all the way up to the top, it is 14 and a half, all right? So that's the taller one. And then this one's kind of a medium sized in between here. And this one is nine inches. Then on the other side, I've got these shorter bins, but again, they're the same length and width. So if you wanted to mix and match this height, with the other ones that I showed you before, that's perfectly fine. These are, I believe, just under five inches. Yeah, these are four and a half inches tall. All right, so again, you can mix and match all of them. Now, if you're curious, when you stack them like this, you can see I've got three of them, of these shorter ones that are four and a half. When you stack all of them, you're gonna be looking at just about 14 inches. Compared to over here on this side, when you stack two of these, then you're going to be looking at a total just under 24 inches there. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you could mix and match some of these different bins. But I really like the efficiency and space that they offer, you know, and that they're not tapered. And so you get full access to all the storage. And then I really like the way that they stack. You don't have to worry about lids so that if you want to get access to this middle bin here, you know, if these were tapered bins like you'd find in a store, you'd have to first take off this top bin, then pull the lid off of it. And then you'd get access where if these straight wall bins, you just lift it up and you can see you've got access immediately to what's below them and they have kind of a a lip under the bottom of each bin that kind of locks them into place on the bin below so in summer i'm able to fit three kind of columns of these bins almost uh you know soldiered back to back like that plus then i've got this shorter bin it's the same length and width as the other ones, but kind of perpendicular to the rest. I'm able to fit all of those here. Plus I've got a toolbox on the opposite side, but I know what you're thinking. You want to know what is inside of your bins, right? All right, so let me show you real quickly. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I like to keep my, my fresh water, my city water supplies here on top where I can get to them easily. So I've of course got my main hose there and then some other backup things like a, a pressure gauge so I can check pressure campsites. Of course, I've got my little cold hose there that plugs into the quick disconnect and the spray port on the other side, things like that. So pretty much 
much everything fresh water in here. And then I like to keep some separation in my bins from my fresh water to my sewer stuff. And so I've got my sewer stuff all the way here in this bottom one, you know, things like the gloves that I use and some extra hoses and different connectors and things like that. And of course the, the sewer hoses themselves get stored in the back on the pinnacle. There's kind of a back compartment all the way there. And then I've got a kind of a secondary backup hose with one of those round uh, storage is under the RV itself. But that's kind of what's going on here. And then you still got some room over here for some other things. I've got a little fan there. And again, this is kind of where that Jayco filtered water five gallon jug sits. And you can see I've got barely enough slack when I have the, the sliding tray going this way. Well, here on the opposite side, you can see I got my toolbox here. I try to keep enough tools on hand to fix, you know, maybe about 80% of the problems that I anticipate encountering while on a camping trip. And then you can see even with the toolbox and the bins and everything, I still have a little bit of space up here in the tray where I can fit things like a little mini blower and a work light and things like that. So that's really nice the way that tray pulls out. But let me show you what's in these other bins here. This first one, I've got some overshoes. If you get to a really muddy campsite and you just don't want to you know, get mud covered up uh, on your, your nice shoes and some basic repair things like some of the Eterna Bond tape in case you, you know, cut something on your roof and some miscellaneous electrical supplies, things like that. And then a little leveler here, an Anderson leveler if you needed to run up on one of those for some reason. Most of this stuff I hardly ever have to use, but it's here in case I need it. The rest of these bins are pretty much all kids toys and stuff. Like we've got down here some different life preservers and things for the pool and then a bunch of different kids games here that we like to play games with the kids at the campsite and then down below i think it's more like beach toys and stuff down there and then i think back here i don't know if you can see that but there's a big 50 amp extension cord in case you get somewhere where you don't have enough uh, 50 amp cord then at least i've got another i think 15 feet or so that i can extend out and then below this bin right here i don't know if you can see that in the video believe it or not that is a boat a boat, an inflatable boat in here. In fact, that is a really fun thing to have if you're RVing, uh, especially if you're going to state parks where there's a lake or something. This has been a ton of fun. It's only, I think, about a hundred bucks or so by Intex. I'll put a link in the description below and throw a picture up. But uh, that boat, that entire boat fits into this compartment right here. And it's just inflatable. You know, it's, it's made to fit maybe two adults, maybe two kids maximum. Usually I just take two of the kids and myself out and it's got little paddles and everything, a lot of fun. And then there's this other bin that I'll show you here. This is a smaller bin that's not really related to these, but I got them from Uline as well. And these are also straight wall bins and they have uh, little dividers that you can put in these slots. You've probably seen these before, but you can organize and put different things in here. And so I've got some more different supplies that we use while we're camping. So I'll put a link to these bins as well. If you're curious on the dimensions here of what these are, they are about 16 and a half wide by 11 inches. And again, it kind of just works out perfectly where with all the other bins that I showed you, these fit lengthwise. And uh, these, again, I bought these years ago. They're really durable. The lids probably are, are average and you know they could crack and snap if you applied pressure to them, but the bins themselves, really durable. Again, it's one of those things that you buy once and you pretty much can use them for years to come. All right, well, that concludes the detailed tour of the basement storage here on my Jayco Pinnacle. I hope you found this video helpful. Like I mentioned earlier, if there's a product that you use in your basement storage or something that you think could benefit me that's missing here, would love to hear about that in the comments below. And definitely let me know what your favorite part about the basement storage tour was. And if I left any details out or you got any questions, of course, drop me a comment. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you.